Clive, we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here, but it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. That Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all... Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. That, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. My lord, Marcus. It is you. Then you received my letter. I am Sebastian Rutherford, chief steward of your Lord Uncle's estate. Of course. We met once before. Yes, my lord. Thank you for coming. And what was so sensitive that you couldn't put it in writing? A thousand apologies, my lord. I did not mean to offend. I merely... It's all right. Continue. I am here at Martha's Rest, at the behest of your Lord Uncle, tasked with learning what I am able of the realm's current state of affairs. And what I have learned is grim. The fall of the Mother Crystals has left Storm in a state of utter disarray. The subsequent darkening of the heavens has only made things worse. Akashic attacks, once unthinkable, are now commonplace. The gears of governance have ground to a halt, and without a steady hand on the tiller, the realm threatens to drift into utter chaos. Your lord, uncle, however, believes there is a way to avoid this fate and is determined to see it set in motion. That sounds like quite the undertaking. It is. Hence my having enlisted the aid of several colleagues serving the seven high houses. Alas. Alas. I have lost contact with two of those colleagues already. They are both able-bodied and trained in the sword, yet in these dark times, even that may not prove sufficient to keep a man safe on the road. So you want me to find them? I'll need to know where they went. One I sent to investigate the Republic, the other the old Imperial capital of Oriflam. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. I suppose... I'll start in Dalamil and work my way east. Thank you, my lord. I shall pray for your success and safety.
It's not going to be easy finding one man in an entire Republic. Let's hope someone here has seen something. Mummy? The gentleman of the town guard was Someone's got himself in trouble. I don't see your master here. So you can start by giving us all the coppers in your purse. I already told you, I have nothing. <laughs> then maybe we'll take that pretty outfit and the steel you're wearing. Uh, uh, please! These men are trying to rob me! I'll deal with this. Thank you. Are you that one's master, then? <laughs> if you kindly pay the coin he owes us, we can pretend you didn't draw your blade on Republican soldiers. Or you can go back to your garrison and I won't report you to your captain. Oh, you're more than welcome to. He hasn't had many visitors since we slit his throat. <laughs> <laughs> as much from Hugo's faithful, but these were men of the fist. Much has changed in the Republican army since they lost their rock. You've seen this kind of thing before then? Many times. I was sent here to observe the situation. You're one of Rutherford's men. He sent me to look for you. Well, then you have my thanks. I fancy I could defend myself against one, perhaps two, but a whole regiment. That... I arrived in Dalamil several days ago, but when I called upon the captain of the local garrison to make inquiries, his men confiscated my effects and locked me in a cell. The captain is no more, and his men make the rules now. Fortunately, I was able to bribe my way free, only to be stopped again by those soldiers you so kindly dispatched. What of the Fist Central Command? Surely they wouldn't allow such lawlessness amongst their ranks. I would imagine they are unaware of it. Most of the army has fallen back to the capital and hunkered down behind her walls. Those who weren't recalled now rule the fringes unchecked, answering to no one but themselves. Then it's worse than we imagined. You should return to Rosaria. It's not safe here. I'll find a caravan heading north. You won't mind if I borrow one of these soldiers' coin purses? Not at all. Now, to find this second associate of Rutherford's. If he was bound for Oriflam, I'll start at North Reach and see if I can pick up his trail. There's a lot of road between here and the capital. Rutherford's man could be anywhere. But there were ghosts at the gates, not days ago. Those 
things I said before. So many women. Milady, I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. Oh, my. Clive, you really have outdone yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you. To settle the hideaway's debt with the veil. And to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The man owes me nothing, nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> It is rather fetching, isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But you and the others at the hideaway are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. Long ago. Yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy, and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened, whether there was anything he could have done, but it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that. Go will want to know the stones were delivered. If he's still with us. I said before. There were ghosts at the gates not days ago. You're with the others. They've already relieved me of my belongings. I'm not. I'm looking for someone who was sent here by a man named Rutherford. And then you found him. I am Alastair Rockford, attendant to the Lady Ariane of House Wellesley. Of the seven high houses of Rosaria. It's been a long time since last I saw my great aunt. Is she well? My Lord Marquis? Uh, yes. Yes, she is. The Lady Dowager has granted me leave to assist your Uncle Stuart. I was on my way back from the old capital when I saw some villagers being robbed on the road here. Bandits. They looked more like field hands, but it didn't matter in the end. I did what I could to help the victims, but all it earned me was a pommel to the temple. Which way did they go? South, toward the gate. All right. I'll take care of them. Founder knows I've met enough of their kind. You head back to Northreach. Visit the Vale. Tell them I sent you. Thank you. I shall. Founder be your shield. They 
They just couldn't resist, could they? This one's ours, pretty boy. <laughs> Make for the town while you can. There may be more bandits nearby. You don't need to tell me twice. Many thanks, Traveller. This looks to be all of them. I thought I told you to make for the Vale. And stand by as ill might befall the heir to the Ducal Throne. It's just Clive, and I'm fine. Which is more than can be said for you. I will survive. Strange that the garrison wouldn't intervene in such a brazen attack so close to their gates. The garrison have their hands full inside the city. Some days they don't even send out patrols. There are few hands left to work the fields, and even fewer to transport the grain. The market stalls are nearly bare, and the price for what remains is exorbitant. It's not uncommon to see a fight break out over a crust of bread. When I said the ones who attacked me didn't have the look of bandits, I meant it. They were probably just desperate. Rockford, listen to me. If you are to continue your investigation, you first need to seek the attention of a healer. I... Of course. I shall return to Northreach right away. But allow me to thank you first. Had you not happened along, I... Don't thank me. Thank Rutherford. It was he who sent me. I suppose he'll be wondering where I've got to. I shall send a bestolus as soon as I'm able. Good day. My uncle certainly has his work cut out for him. If it isn't already too late. I should go and tell Rutherford that his colleagues are still in one piece.
see you're still here. The rest's location affords a constant flow of traders, and with it, a constant flow of information. Speaking of which, I received word from both my associates. They have resumed their investigations, thanks to you. I only happen to be in the right place at the right time. They both seem to think the realm's prospects rather grim. I am afraid that grim would be putting it lightly. Storm is in crisis, and if we are to free her, we must work quickly. And we must work together. Such is your Lord Uncle's wish. As it is mine. There were ghosts at the gate, not days ago. You needn't fret. The creatures are... Ready, go. This might take a while. Apocrity said I should be able to find what I'm looking for somewhere nearby. Light blue dragons and bright yellow flowers. Should be easy enough to spot. <laughs> Help me, boy.
the wyvern's liver. Now I just need to find the herbs. Bright yellow with a heady scent. I think that's everything Molly needs to resurrect her recipe. Better head back. I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah, oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best, but she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh. Wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. Seems the hideaway has lost its... So, did you have that word with Tomes then? I did, and he was as helpful as ever. He told me exactly where to look, in fact. And what precisely will I be cooking up? Or is it better not to know? Blueback wyvern liver. And, uh, a herb known as Saint's Bonnet. Ah, wyvern livers, was it? Well... At least it weren't actual worms, I suppose. Now then, you stay right where you are. I've got some cooking to do. Let's hope these grand old chefs of yore knew what they were on about. And here we have it. Fried Mortress of Skyworm. Ivan's offered to make sure it's fit for consumption. Well, I say offered. He as good as begged. 
And rightly so. Is there any higher honor than partaking in a slice of culinary history? <coughs> so, not fit for consumption, then. What? What witchery is this? The crackle of the crust gives way to an almost violent richness. Yet, it is the piquant kiss of the saint's bonnet that tames this savage dish. It is a tour de force, a force of nature even, a maelstrom of flavor and sensation, a graceful beast emerging from centuries of slumber. I think he likes it. Well, I can't quite tell with all that nonsense he's talking, but I reckon you might be right. It was decent then, I take it. Decent? It's remarkable, and I defy any man to say a word to the contrary. Sid, might I suggest that you command a party of your finest men and women to procure a dozen blueback wyverns forthwith? I'll give it some thought. Lady Karen, Goad tells me you weren't happy with our offer, but you prefer the debt was repaid in coin. What debt? I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard-earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers, but those were donations, and you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another, and our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. Where'd you even get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. Might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. A fine continental maid whose beauty is only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You won't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. I hear you ended up delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump. I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh... I, uh, I still haven't been paid last month's wages. Oh! So you remember what's owed to you, then? Get your ass behind that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledges are square. I've seen that before. You yeah, have, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit, or because the filthy soul couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the Dame both seem to have fond memories of him. <laughs> I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died. Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship, which is where I met him. He bought passage to... I oh, forget where. And having nothing better to do on the long nights, we set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. 
quit my post not long after that. On account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close. Promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was... Before fate stepped in. And said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day. And there was no hiding his knack. Couldn't you and your family have... My family were the ones who summoned the constable, wanted the monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him, forget what I felt, and I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted to tear the whole world down. Him, who cried for me, when I had no tears left of my own. Him, who swore he'd do everything he could to stop it from happening again. And he was true to his word, too. Left the Royal Army once and for all. His ranks, his ribbons, gone. Just like that. Threw away everything he had. All to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face. I knew then I'd follow that man to the ends of the earth. too clever for his own good was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore to myself that I'd always be right behind him, ready to catch the stubborn sod if ever he should fall. But I couldn't even do that. Ignore me. Just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This... This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto, I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. You should have bloody well said so then. Just once. Before he went. <laughs> but then, why would he? Him, or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction, 
Don't barely seem to be able to do that anymore. <laughs> Would you rather go with the helm? <laughs> Well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go... Sid would have wanted you to have this. But that... This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Come to claim your just desserts. Here you are. Best of luck out there, Sid. Three cities and a sea.
Clive. Smoke. Has the city fallen? Here's your hide. As requested. I worried you might never return. Quickly, let me see it. Oh, as supple as a maiden's cheek. Yet as adamant as her virtue. This is everything I had hoped for, and more. Clearly, my trust in you was not misplaced. You must be a hunter of considerable talent to have bested the beast with nary a scratch. Join me as my honored partner. With my means and your might, we shall be as wealthy as the merchant kings of Zemeckis. I don't plan on making a habit of this. I'm busy enough as it is. Very well. Though I believe fate had a hand in our meeting, it would be unbecoming of me to beg. Do not allow me to keep you from being about your business. Here, for the hide. Cities and a sea. Free men are still holding their own, then. Do we have any idea where Gav and the others might be? There's a warehouse near the docks where we agreed to meet if there was any trouble. We should hurry.
Sounds like thunder. <laughs> We're starting to think you'd stumbled off a cliff. I seem to recall that was you, Gav. Good to see you. Any trouble on the road? Nothing we couldn't handle. I knew you'd come. Is that who I think it is? Yes. Uh, allow me to introduce my brother, Joshua. Clive's told me all about you. Or even listening most of the time. Name's Middadol. But everyone calls me Mid. My lady. Hey! <laughs> My... Boy. Uncle Byron. <laughs> it's really you. I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> so these Akashic are being controlled. That's what it looked like. Empty eyes, eerie blue glow. No doubt they were turned, but silent as monks, every last one of them. Your man here speaks true, Clive. We saw more than a few in the city. They moved in ranks with a purpose, and not of their own. Ultima's doing. Perhaps. What of the city? The people? <sighs> Dead, mostly. Mostly, but not all. A handful managed to lock themselves in their villas before the Horde arrived. Some in the Merchant's District to the west, and a few of us on the far bank. Hmm. If the Akashic stumble across either hiding place, a few bolted doors won't hold them for long. We need to find them. And quickly. What do you propose? We split into two parties. I will make for the Merchant's District, while you look to those across the river. Mind keeping an eye on my brother? Not at all. We find the villa and try the servant's entrance. Understood. And what of us? Mid, is she fit to sail? The ship? Uh, the Mithril engine could probably do with a few more tweaks. Then you better work fast. Even if we do reach the survivors in time, they'll never make it to the hideaway on foot. You leave that to me. See that Mid doesn't get herself into trouble, would you? Think I can manage that? I'll keep him safe. Looks like you stuck with me, Byron. That's Lord Rossfield, you little gutter snipe! Shall we then? And you keep Clive safe. Be careful. Both of you. You too. All right, Torgal. Let's find those survivors. <laughs> They don't stand a chance against those things.
help me, boy. Get him. This one.
caused quite the commotion. But then I would expect no less from you, Muthos. You again. I don't believe we've been introduced. You were in my family's crypt. And now you're here. With an army of Akashic thralls. Manners, Lord Rossfield. They are men. Like you and me. Albeit one's uh, unburdened by the wills that drive our kind to madness. They are pure. They are... divine. What? And they are all that remains in this once raucous city. You'll pay for what you've done. As you wish. I confess, I have been very much looking forward to this. Pardon me, this indulgence, your majesty. The vessel shall not be spoiled. I am the name of House Harvard. And you will yield! Or not. Not as you don't hold back. To me, boy!
will forgive me if my performance seems uninspired. It is just that I expected so much more from our chosen one. Perhaps this will kindle your flame? What now? A gift from my liege lord's armory. Gungnir. Watch closely, Nuthos.
The vessel is strong. My liege. Clive! You're all right. As are you, I see. We are, yes. I'm sorry, but... We couldn't save them. It was over before we arrived. Well, you did what you could. I fear we were all too late. What's wrong? Nothing. I hope. So soon, Mythos. It's the king. Indeed, you may kneel before Barnabas Tharm, warden of Ash and king of Walud. Get back. Did my lord commander. Yet I see why my master covets you so. The power within you, Mythos. The potential. Stop calling me Mythos. But Mythos is everything. The cornerstone of all creation. The lord's vessel. Your purpose. Purpose? To surrender my mind and body to that thing? No, Your Majesty. My purpose is my own. I made a promise to my friends, to my people. And nothing is going to stand in my way. You would allow this delusion of free will to bar your path to greatness? Truly, your volition is a cancer. One that must be excised. Oh! 
worry! <laughs> Power beyond reckoning. And they use it as a crutch. Such a waste. Will he be all right? The Phoenix can mend flesh, but the spirit must recover on its own. I'm afraid the rest is up to him. This place is remarkable. Outfitting it must have been no small feat. But why go to such trouble? That beauty's belly is filled with wonders the world ain't ready for. If the guilds caught wind of what we're up to, they'd all want a piece. All right. And how is he? Do not blame yourself. He was barely breathing when you brought him here. We would have lost him if it were not for you. No. Barnabas may have severed nigh every sinew in my brother's body. But he made certain the wounds were not fatal. Nigh every sinew? Allow me, your lordship. Don't know what I was thinking, putting you to the trouble like that. <laughs> Tis no trouble carrying comestibles to my ailing nephew. I know, but... You've already done so much for us. Pouring your gill into the hideway and now the ship. I don't want to take the piss. You risked your life. And for what? Some girl you hardly know. Why'd you do it? You got mad or something? I... wouldn't go that far. Clive! You're awake. My boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what I want to do is help. And the world won't save itself. It was Sid. Your father, who taught me that. Sounds like him. Don't you dare do that again. What of the Royalists? Fucked off, the lot of them. Along with the Galleon. With the King on board, no doubt. The Iron Hay, I wouldn't sail without him. <sighs> Clive. Jill didn't come back. What do you mean? She kept the king busy while the others dragged you out. It's all right, Mid. Jill is fine. The ether of her icon endures. And as long as it does, we can be certain she is alive. <laughs> we must pursue the Black Galleon. Jill will be with the King, I'm sure of it. Well, good luck catching him. Because my ship's going nowhere. It's the Mithril engine. She's got a kick like a wild chocobo and a mind to tear the hull in half. Or do you have an idea? Uh, well, of course I do. My dad will have seen this coming a league off. If I had his old writings... If you had his old writings, you'd be sitting under a fuckload of rubble. The ones Otto didn't save anyway. I suppose he might still have a few pages in his stores. We'll have to hope it's enough. Do what you can to ready the ship. I'll speak with Otto. In your condition, you really are mad. 
Perhaps. But the world really won't save itself. Gav said that Otto might know something. Cole said it was an army of a cash. How are we supposed to do our duty when the hills are crawling? Gav? But if you're here, where the hell is everyone else? Don't tell me. They're all right. But it's a long story. You lot don't do things by halves, do you? But at least everyone's still breathing. Now, as for these writings, I'm sorry to say, Clive, but if you had those, you'd be... Sitting under a pile of rubble, I know. But we were able to save a few bits and pieces from the ruins, most of which ended up being used to build this place. The more personal items we go to the next of kin. In the case of Sid's things, that would have been mid. Then I'll check the workshop. How are you doing? Here you go. I'll be taking you all to a storehouse in the bales. Leave anything you don't need. You know what you have to do. Clive, I fear that I must bid you farewell. As you know, our time grows short. The Lord Chief Justice's vultures are circling. We must strike now. Before we part, I want you to know that... Though I may not always have been your most vocal ally, I trust you, as I trusted your predecessor. Thank you. I appreciate the sentiment, and I understand more than anyone how you feel. But is revenge really the answer? It is the one I found, and it is all that I have lived for since that day. But what of Lostwing? Everything you've built. I built Lostwing to achieve this aim. Once it is done, the village will have served its purpose. My comrades and I are sure of our cause, and we shall fight to the last, come what may. But there are those among us who cannot fight. Children. The elderly. Bearers afflicted by the curse. I would place Lostwing in their hands, if I thought it would do them any good. But a village home only to the frail and the infirm is not likely to stay a safe haven for long. And so, Clive, I find myself turning to you once more. Will you take them to your hideaway, that they might live even should Lostwing die? I will. Thank you. I will not have it said that I did not see to the well-being of those who rallied to my cause. The people I speak of have withdrawn to Goten's Bales, away from danger in case the Black Shields strike. Understood. I'll make sure they get to the hideaway safely. Then the last of my preparations are complete. Fare you well, Clive. And may Grieger guide us. All of us. Gotan's bail. Then, and quickly, before anyone else finds them.
Everyone. Quinton has asked that you come with me. He can no longer guarantee your protection, but I can. There's a safe place I can take you to. Well, if that's what the Master thinks best. Sid, none of us would be standing here today if it weren't for Master Quinton. We owe him our lives. So we ain't about to start telling him what he should do with his. If he's saying we ain't safe in Lost Wing no more, it's because he ain't coming back. And if that's what has to happen, then so be it. I only hope he can see this through to the end. That we get to see justice done. I hope so too. Oi! You lot! Where's everyone else? They ain't already left, have they? They've gone with Master Quinton. Fuck! 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 What's wrong? I've just come from the Justice's Manor. We have to get Quinton to call off the attack. It ain't just the Black Shields protecting the place. He's got a guard dog and all. A fucking monster! They don't stand a chance against that thing. If I don't get the message to them, they're all gonna fucking die! No. We can't let this happen. Sid! Don't worry about us. You've got to catch up with him. We can't let Quinton die before that bastard does. All right. I'll do what I can. Where is this manor? Uh, it's way over to the east, through the woods. Heaven all, he calls it. Promise us, Sid. Promise us you'll do what you can. Let's go. Yeah! Too late. Quinton, are you all right? No, but I am alive. Which is more than I can say for my comrades. They followed me without question all the way here. And they died for nothing. This must be the guard dog, Quinton. I'll hold it off. You go. But. Comrades didn't die for nothing. They died for you. Don't let their sacrifice be in vain. I won't. Come on, then. You're no guard dog. You're just a rabid beast that needs to be put down.
If only we'd arrived earlier. Is it over? This is. He wept and begged for mercy. And I cut him from ear to ear, just as I dreamed of doing all these years. All my plans, building a haven in Lostwing, freeing bearers from their chains and recruiting them to my cause. It was all for this. But what is this? Justice. My faithful comrades, all those lives lost, so that I might take another. Quinton. Master Quinton! Oh, thank Grega you're safe. You. You're alive. And so are you. I'm so sorry. I, I tried to warn you about that thing and I hate to say it but there's more bad news it's lost wing it's been flooded what Lost wing. My lost wing. And look who's here. They must have stolen in after we left, just before the flood struck. What if there are still people in there? Don't be a fool!
need to get back to Quinton. Quinton. Quinton! Look at me! Thank the founder. He hasn't turned. I'm going to get you out of here. Welcome back to the land of the living. Is Lostwing... The flood has filled the valley. I see. Then all is at an end. A strange way to achieve one's life's ambition. No, Master Quinton. Save your strength. Why? All that I strove for is gone. Only emptiness remains. I... I have nothing left to live for. What the heck are you on about? You've got us, ain't you? Don't try telling me you only freed us so you could get revenge. We're more than that to you, and we all know it. I... I thought you weren't coming back. But... I prayed, and I prayed, and you did. There's got to be a reason for that, right? Can't we just go back to how it was? You know, you looking after us all. Your work ain't over yet, Master Quinton. We believed that you were the right man to lead us, and we still do. Your village may be lost, but it seems your people aren't. So long as you remain to guide them. But why? After what I... Why would anyone follow me? Because we're family, aren't we? Family? Yeah. And all our comrades who went with you, they felt the same. Lostwing weren't just a village. It was all of us. It was. And as long as we're still here, it is too. We can start again. Build a new Lost Wing, right here in the Bales. A fresh start. One life ends, and another begins. Why just a village? We could build towns. A nation, even. What's to stop us? That's the Master Quinton we know. Please. I am nobody's master. Quinton will suffice. After all, we are family. Permit me to withdraw my request. I will no longer be needing your help in looking after my people. I'll pretend you never asked. But you must be rewarded for your efforts on our behalf. You saved my life twice over. And more besides. A bottle or two of your finest red will suffice. Of course. Nothing but the best. And I have a feeling that this year's vintage will be the finest yet. If you don't mind waiting, that is. I look forward to it. <laughs> 